I remember growing up as a little girl in Ghana. Um, we'd always been in one church or the other. I think we were always brought up in the Lord. I remember my mom always dressing us up for service and depending on which auntie or uncle or cousin we're going with, we ended up in different churches. So sometimes for that week we go to a Catholic church and some other time we go to Apostolic or Methodist or Anglican and depending on whichever auntie we're going with and sometimes one auntie was always favored because we, we asked her whether they're going to serve any snacks at her church so she lets us know okay this Sunday there's going to be snacks and then all the kids in her house you know go with that auntie so that's how it's always been. One day, she heard on the radio about a church that was, that had their services between seven to nine. It was kind of like two hours or three hours there about. They said, oh, I can do this. It means I can still go to church and come back and still get everything done. So she dressed us up, and for the first time, I saw my mom also going to church. Well, we went to church, and then they said, okay, who are the first timers here? And then myself and a group of other um, adolescents stood up and then the pastor, we exchanged names and he said, okay, welcome and all that. And he said, okay, well, we have a tradition here. First, first time is get a gift, actually for three, three consecutive times when you show up to church. And then when we were asked to go back to our seats, he called me back out of everyone else. Okay, now, here's the Bible and the uh, the badge, which one do you want? You can pick any. Then I reached for the Bible. And I was so happy. And when I was walking to my seat, I kept wondering about God. I'm like, wow. It was just between my mom and my siblings, miles away in front of our apartment, that I complained about that huge Bible. And I was embarrassed to take it to church. And here is God offering me the perfect size that I needed. It just showed that he cared about me. Like, you know, the things that concerned me concerned him. Like, it didn't matter what it was. It was completely different from what I did. I don't know. I have lived outside the country before in the UK, but it was still a new experience. And at least with my husband, he had his friends all there customers that he deals with at the right place, he had his colleagues to talk to. But here I am, I didn't know anyone, and close families that I knew were far away in Gettysburg. So now I'm pregnant, and it was time for my son to be born. And it had to be born through an emergency C-section where they put me to sleep. Now, exactly a week after I had my son, I still hadn't seen him. And I was still recovering from a C-section and I kept praying, praying for him and just wondering when I'll get to see him. I finally get to see him one week after and I held my son for the first time. I was able to touch him, I was able to kiss him and it was on my birthday. And so every other weekend when my husband is off, we would drive all the way to get his bag. And it was quite a journey. And on the way with the screaming baby <laughs> and having to stop several times, you know, before we get there, and sometimes even getting there late, <laughs> it was beginning, even though we had fun there and everything, it was, it was beginning to be a bit challenging. So I began to search for churches online every week. We go, we try a new church. Sometimes we go, I have fun, I enjoy it, I love it. My husband hates it, he doesn't like it. We go to a different place, he loves it. I'm like, no, this is not for me. So finally, one time, my friend, a friend of mine, said, oh, I just saw South Point Alley, and I also saw South Point Church. And we decided to give the church a try. So the first time we walked in, I think it was during the county fair era, we walked in, I went to sign my kids up, they gave me the sticker and all of that. And each time the, the red flashing numbers came on the screen, I checked to see if it was my girl because from past experiences it was always 10. But 
Each time I check, it wasn't my mom. I'm like, wow, what is going on? So we go through the service, and I loved worship because the first thing that grabbed me was the worship team. And during then, it was Curtis who was singing, and he's with the Lord now. But I'm like, wow, I want to be part of the worship team because I'd always been in one worship team or the other. Now, I go back to get my little girl, and they said she didn't cry. And for the first time in years, I had, if it was just one hour to myself, I'm like, oh, I'm definitely coming back next week. <laughs> Even if it waits for me, that was my mommy time, <laughs> so. Well, he goes to work, and he gets home, it's like, oh, one of my customers said they go to this church, they have it in the school. And at a South Point chair, then I started laughing. <laughs> I'm like, really? So next week I'm off. I want us to go give them a try and see. So the, the week after we go to church, and he liked it. And again, they didn't have to call me to come for my Isabel. And the kids loved it there. And so right away, I joined the worship team. And it was during that era, they said, okay, we'll be having our baptism. And I said, well, it's about time. And finally, after all those years, I got baptized. And that itself was, was a wonderful experience too. And we've been in South Point ever since. I think it's been four going on to five years now. And like every other family, it is not perfect. But that's one thing that I love about that. Because all of us are, we all have our differences, we all have our, our shortcomings and the purpose of the church isn't for us to come in perfect but for all the mis imperfect people to just rely on God and the word of God to lead us to where Jesus wants us to be. So that's the reason why we are still in South